This video is going to be an overview of what our new journaling process is going to be for the last few weeks of the semester, and the next video will be me actually guiding you through it. So this is posted as a PDF online, so you can read through it yourself as well, but just in case any of it doesn't make sense. This is taken from Linda Barry's book, Syllabus, and is kind of what she did with her class that she ran and I'm tweaking it slightly for our class so you'll notice that there's some areas that I've kind of blurred out and that I've put my notes in because she did a slightly different version for her kids. But what we're going to do is we're going to focus on taking those things that we noticed, uh, things that we heard or we saw, and we're going to try to apply it in a slightly different way. Um, and hopefully it's a little bit of a longer practice, but hopefully it'll get us thinking about specific scenes. So kind of going from generally noticing things to starting to develop uh, individual scenes on their own. Now, first off, the big thing that I've done is I've made this from a 20 minute um, exercise to a 10 minute exercise. So I have condensed down some of the things that she had her students do. You will need 10 minutes of uninterrupted time. And the next video will be me guiding you through those 10 minutes. So we're going to use two spreads in our notebook, two sets of two pages. And we're going to leave one of those pages for us drawing in a spiral, drawing in a circle. And I do actually want you to draw that circle. So when you take a photograph of this page, I want to see your spirals. Um, we're going to be doing this partly to get us to try to clear our minds of all the other stuff going on before it maybe wasn't as hard to get us to kind of focus on what's going on around us in terms of our day. But right now we've got a lot going on in our lives and everything is kind of coming at us thick and fast. So I want us to actually stop, stop the noise in our head, really just empty our brains out, and then we can access our thoughts and memories in a much clearer way. Hopefully this will have an unintended or I suppose intended consequence of also being a little bit of a mindfulness practice for a couple minutes, but we're going to be trying to access some of our creative energies and some of our memories as a way to kind of think about how we visualize scenes. So we're going to work on making our spirals and you can take up as much of that whole blank sheet of paper as you want. Um, you're going to start with a dot and you're going to draw that line and keep it going. One thing I talked about at the beginning of the semester is how sometimes if we do something and take up a certain part of our brain, it kind of allows that creative uh, part of our brain to come to the forefront. So we're just going to draw and try to like check out from the kind of conscious side of the brain and like just draw in a circle. And it can be kind of fun to try to do it so that you're trying to get the lines as close as possible, but so that they don't actually touch because if they touch, you're going to get zapped. Maybe not really, but it's fun to pretend. So on the other side of the paper that we're not going to draw our spiral on, what we're going to do to kind of prep ourselves before we start is to number the other side one through 10, because we're going to try to think of 10 things when I give you a prompt. So that brings us on to page two. So again, when we're drawing our spiral, and I'm going to guide you through this in the um, video, I want you to relax and I want you to kind of use this as a time to empty out your brain of all of the other stuff that's going on in it, all the things you need to do, all of the assignments that you have due, all of the things that need done in the house, your cat that is sitting at your feet meowing at you. Um, and I want you to just kind of empty your brain out and put the attention at the top of your head. And then we're going to move it to your forehead and we're going to move it back down. And we're going to keep kind of bringing our attention through our body as we draw. So this is another way to try to get that kind of forefront chatter of your brain to just shut off, to just stop thinking and to allow us to just kind of empty the brain out of all that other stuff. Because a lot of that stuff just kind of clutters our brain up. And so we're going to spend 10 minutes just decluttering the brain. And then that's going to be a way. So the first minute we're going to be drawing the spiral and we're going to be trying to empty out our brain of all that stuff so that then when we get to the prompt, we've kind of got a blank slate and that you don't have anything else cluttering up your brain in the forefront that's drawing your attention away. As much as we're just kind of emptying our brain out in a way that allows us to pay better attention. It seems like it's counterintuitive, but it's true. So once we're done decluttering our brain for a minute, I'm going to ask you to think back to the early days of your life to just picture something from that time 
and then move back through your life using the first 10 memories associated with a word that I will give you a prompt. So we're gonna start with the word car and each week I'm gonna give you three prompts and I don't care which three days you do them on. You'll still get the little notification if you're signed up for the um, calendar reminder on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But you can do them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday if that's better for you. You can do them Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It doesn't matter to me as long as you do one prompt per day on three different days from the week. So for each of these prompts, you're going to do a numbered page and you're also gonna do an X page, but we'll get to that in a minute. So for the number pages, you are going to write down, you're going to have two minutes. And again, I'm going to keep time for you. You're going to write down 10 scenes, 10 things that pop into your mind for car. So this was somebody's scene that they came up with. Um, these are cars that they remembered from their childhood. And again, trying to think back as far as you can in your memory to try to see what pops up. Now, after these two minutes, trying to think of as many different memories you can think of, as many different things that come to mind for that noun that's a prompt, I'm gonna have you read over your list and pick one that's a particularly vivid memory and maybe the most interesting as well, and I want you to circle that one. Now at this point, you've filled up both sides of that spread. So I'm gonna have you flip open to the next two pages that are blank, and I'm gonna have you draw big X's across them both, and you'll see in a minute what that looks like. Once you've drawn X's across both of those pages, I want you to write that memory, in this case, car that hit Rhonda White, at the top of the page on the left, as if it were gonna be the title of a story that you were gonna tell us. So here is an example of an X page. So it's a page in the journal and she's just put a giant X through the middle of it. That's literally what the X page is. So you're gonna write down as the title that one from your list of 10 things. So you're thinking about the first 10 memories associated with the word car. Those 10 memories, they thought number five was the most interesting and vivid memory. So you would write car that hit Rhonda White at the top of this X page. Now on this X page, we're going to start by picturing ourselves in the image. And in this case, she's using it as a jumping off point for a story. We're going to keep this a little bit smaller because we're going to keep it to 10 minutes, not 20. But I want you to imagine that memory that you have and try to visualize it as much as you possibly can, trying to think about the details. Then I'm going to ask you some questions and I'll read through these in a second for you, but they'll be in the video as well. And what I want you to write down and you'll have 10 to 20 seconds per question is the answer as if I were on the phone and you were trying to describe that picture to me. You can write these answers anywhere on the page. It can be as messy as you want. You can write them in any angle that you want. You can fill up the page. The X across the page is basically, you're crossing that page out. You're allowed to do whatever you want with this page. So it doesn't have to be neat. It doesn't have to make sense. Uh, but I want you to write down anything you think of, any details especially are great, that you can think of in the answer to these questions that would allow somebody else to see the scene as you see it in your head. No detail is going to be too small or unimportant. So the questions are, where are you? What time of day or night does it seem to be? What season does it seem to be? Where is the light coming from? What kind of light is it? What's the temperature? What does the air smell like? What are you doing in this memory? Is there anyone else in the image with you? What are they doing if they are there? Why are you there? What are some of the sounds you can hear? What are some of the things you can see? What's directly in front of you? If you turn your head to the right, what's there? If you turn your head to the left, what do you see there? What's behind you? If you look down, what's below and around your feet? If you looked up, what's above your head? And you're gonna have 10 to 20 seconds to answer each of those questions and just write out text on the page. 
Then I want you to pause and when you look at the other sheet of paper, you're gonna, you've got an X through it, but you're really gonna do it in half. I don't really care how you do it in half, whatever two triangles you want, but you're gonna spend one minute sketching out that scene. And again, it can be stick figures, it can be anything you want, but thinking you've now just thought through the scene in terms of text, now just try to sketch for one minute in one half of that sheet of paper what that scene would look like. You're kind of almost doing like a thumbnail or a rough of where the major areas would be that you would fill in later if you were drawing the scene. Now you've got another half of the sheet of paper and you've got one more minute left. So in the other half, I want you to do a really quick drawing from your day for me. It can be where you're sitting right now. You're surrounded, in this case, she's surrounded by, I don't know if they're cats or dogs, but she's surrounded by creatures and she's got a lamp. And that could be our day because we're all gonna be stuck inside. But show me a really quick scene from your day and I want it to be quick. You can see how messy and silly this is. It doesn't have to be even this good. It can be made out of stick figures. You can put text in if you want, you don't have to. So this is an example of the X page with text on it if you wanna get a sense of what the students did and what she showed in her book, Syllabus. So in this case, it was a Hot Wheels car or it's called Hot Wheels, I'm not sure. And these are the things around it. I think maybe it was a Hot Wheels TV show based on some of the text, but I don't know for sure, but that's okay. So this gives you a sense of what I'd be looking for. And so you're gonna send me, when you do these, you'll send me either two photographs, one photograph per two page spread, or if it's easier for you to photograph one page at a time, then you can send me four photographs. But remember to send me your photographs every time you do your uh, composition book so that that way it doesn't build up and you've got a big backlog you need to send me. This also will help me make sure that we are doing it regularly. And if I haven't gotten three from you in a week, I'll probably shoot you an email to check in with you. The next video you'll be able to play if you actually want to have me guide you through it each time that you do. I'm gonna pause where there should be the prompt when I do this. Um, and just remember to kind of keep in mind what that prompt should be when you watch that video.